Good morning. We want to welcome everybody to Farmington Baptist Church. If you're a visitor, we definitely want to welcome you. Appreciate you uh, joining us for worship this morning. Brother Ben is here. We're going to kick off the service with a baptismal service. Uh, Brother Daniel Toon is going to uh, be getting baptized here shortly. Uh, so that's a nice little treat for us this morning. A uh, few announcements in the bulletin, of course. Uh, the big one is VBS starts this Wednesday night. Uh, VBS is this Wednesday night. Uh, we'll meet out front. Each night looks like the weather, knock on wood, is going to be perfect. And we're going to march in. Every night there will be a supper for the kids and a little opening ceremony. And VBS is not just for the young ones. Uh, the youth, we have VBS. It's always a, we always have a great turnout with youth. We usually have like 20 to 30 kids and we go different places each night. We go bowling one night, Culver's one night. So be sure any age from, from all the way to little bitty ones through uh, high school, uh, there will be something... Uh, for you uh, at VBS. There are still opportunities to help out. If you want to help out, see Miss Heidi. Uh, and of course, uh, today she has asked after the morning service if anybody is willing to stay and help set the stage up. Uh, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. A couple other things to note uh, tonight uh, we will be observing the Lord's Supper, the members of Farmington Baptist Church, and that will be our service uh, for tonight couple of softball announcements. Uh, I found out last night there will be a t-ball game. The first t-ball game will be at 6, uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow night. And I believe there also is an adult game uh, tomorrow night as well. You can check the schedule out uh, to see the time for that. I believe it's at 8 o'clock. And adult softball t-shirts, uh, they will be here next Sunday. Uh, be sure if you ordered one uh, to uh, pay for your shirt, give uh, Miss Denise uh, money for that and the prices are in the uh, bulletin. Uh, and last thing, uh, church camp. The absolute, I know I have deadlines, the absolute deadline can't go any longer, it has to end, uh, is this Wednesday night. I, I can probably make Thursday work. They might get mad at me. Thursday, I can add you. So if you are not signed up for church camp, we still have a couple of spots, and I'm kind of making a little eye contact at a couple of people. Uh, there are still just a couple of spots open, so if you want to go, uh, I, I can get you at it. I can beg and plead, and, and we'll get you in there. So uh, I need to know by this Thursday, though. Uh, give me a heads up today if you are wanting uh, to go. So that's it for our announcements. We're going to go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and then uh, we will hand the service over to Brother Ben uh, for this baptismal service. So if you will, let's just pray and give God thanks for the day and for this baptism that we are going to witness. God, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come to your house, Lord, and just uh, worship you, Lord. And God, I just pray uh, and just want to give thanks uh, for this morning, for this, uh, this Lord's Day, God, where we can come in and we can worship you. And God, I just want to thank you for Brother Daniel, God, and just uh, uh, him stepping out in, in, in faith, God, and, and wanting to join this church, God, and, and through baptism, God. And we just pray a blessing upon uh, this baptismal, Lord, and just uh, his life. And God, we just want to pray for the service this morning. You'll be with Brother Greg and Brother Ben, Lord, and you'll just uh, give them uh, the words to sing, the words to say, God. And God, I just pray, Lord, if there's one here that's lost, God, or one here that needs to make a move, that this morning will be that time. God, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Uh, we've got Daniel Toon with us here this morning. We're thankful for Daniel. He came down a couple of weeks ago, and the Lord had been working in Daniel's life. Brother Richard Browning uh, is here this morning. Brother Richard was uh, teaching him and talking to him and some other students. And uh, Daniel, you put your faith and trust in the Lord. You uh, made Jesus your Lord and Savior. You know that you're saved. And once we get saved, we want to follow the Lord in baptism, unite with a New Testament church. And uh, Brother Daniel said he wants to be a member of Farm and Baptist Church. We're glad to have him. And I'm thankful as he follows the Lord in this step and is baptized. Let's pray. And I'm going to pray as, as uh, and you pray as I pray. And let's pray and ask God's blessings on Daniel. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we're thankful for our Brother Daniel this morning. Lord, I'm thankful a few weeks ago he was saved. And God, Father, I know you've been working in his life. And thankful for, uh, Lord, we're so thankful for all of those, Brother Richard and others who are having an impact on him. Thankful for his friends and family. Lord, I pray you'd bless him. I know you're going to use him. 
uh, to do great things in the kingdom in the days ahead. And I pray you'd just uh, uh, pour your blessings upon him, Lord. And I'm thankful for his, we're thankful for his faithfulness and willing to be baptized and become a member of the church. We ask you to bless him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith, and under the authority of Farmington Baptist Church, I baptize thee, Daniel Toon, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all God's people say it. Amen. 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 All right, Brother Greg, we'll turn it over to you, Brother. All right, it's already been a good service, hasn't it? Good, good to see you this morning. Glad to see some uh, visitors as well. Always good to see uh, our visitors. If you would, uh, stand up with us. We'll give Lisa just a moment to get, get, get everything set. All right, we're going to start out with, uh, matter of fact, one of Janet's favorite songs that she's going to be bringing the special this morning. Uh, let's sing, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have lied in my soul for which long I have sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure Since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know, since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy as onward I go Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. All right, good start, good start, amen. Uh, let's sing a song, uh, we, we've sung it on Sunday night some, haven't sung it I don't believe on a Sunday morning, but it's a, it's a good uh, older song it's called mansion over the hilltop i'm satisfied with just a cottage low a little silver and a little city where the rest will shine I want a gold one that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow Streets 
sands our purest gold who often tempted tormented and tested and like the prophets my billows of stone and though I find here no going to continue on in just a moment. Let's go to the Lord in the word of prayer. Dusty, would you, would you lead us in the word of prayer, please? Amen. All right, let's continue on. We're going to put a couple of songs together. We're going to start out with How Majestic Is Your Name, and then uh, we'll wrap it up with uh, uh, Through It All in this little medley. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, we praise your name. O oh Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God. O oh Lord, God Almighty. Majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Oh Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God. Oh Lord, God Almighty, through it all, through it all, I've learned to 
trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Amen, amen. A song written by the late uh, Andre Crouch. All right, let's, uh, let's wrap up this morning with uh, How Great Is Our God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great! our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end beginning and the end. The God had three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise, my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise, my heart will sing how great. Amen. You can be seated. Yeah. 
is gone and mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when all will bow appreciate Miss Janet singing for the Lord. Uh, there's coming a great day when we'll all be able to, to worship Him together. Amen. We're going to be in the book of Acts this morning. Hope you have your Bibles with you. Acts chapter number 9. The book of Acts chapter number 9. And uh, we're going to be reading verses 18 and verse number 19. Acts chapter number 9, verses 18 and verse number 19. You can leave your ribbon right here. as uh, We're going to stay right here in Acts chapter 9. And think about this thought. Three steps after salvation. Three steps after uh, salvation. The Bible here is talking about 
the Apostle Paul. He's called Saul. Saul would have been his Hebrew name. Paul was his Roman, his Latin name. Uh, that's the only difference between those two. It was one way in, in, in Roman and Latin and another way in, in Hebrew, but the same individual, the best known as the Apostle Paul. And we read about him here in Acts chapter number 9, beginning in verse number 18. The Bible says about Paul, it says, And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forwith. And he arose and was baptized. Verse 19. And when he had received strength, I received meat, food, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the, uh, the day we've had. Lord, I'm so thankful for each family and person that's in the Lord's house uh, this morning. Father, we're thankful for those who are watching now or will watch later. And I know we've enjoyed the worship. We're thankful for the baptismal service. And now we pray you'd bless the preaching and teaching of your word. May the word speak to each and every heart this morning. Uh, we pray Jesus will be lifted up. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. All right, you can stay right here again in your Bibles as we think about three steps after salvation. I know some of you are going to say, well, Brother Ben, uh, this is a pretty simple message. But I think a lot of times, you know, we can't see the forest for the trees sort of thing. Sometimes we miss the simple things. I want you to see right here three things, one in verse 18. One in verse 19, one in verse 20. Three things. The Apostle Paul gets saved in this chapter. Saul of Tarsus, the man who persecuted the church. The man who was there when Stephen the deacon was stoned to death. This man who, who hated Jesus and the followers of Jesus. He gets saved early in this chapter. And then three things happen to him after his salvation. I, I want to encourage all of you. I hope, number one, you've been saved. That's the most important thing. We don't ever want to get the cart for the horse, so make sure you, first of all, got the salvation. But if you've been saved, if you're a born-again Christian, I hope all of us can say, I I've taken these three steps. And if not, I, I pray the Lord, you'll follow the leadership of the Lord and take the final steps. Three steps after. They're not for salvation. Three steps after, don't miss that, three steps after salvation. Let's look at them. And, and uh, they're all going to start the letter I. And uh, so uh, we'll, we'll look at them. So the first one is step number one is baptism or the letter with the letter I, identification. Step number one, baptism or identification. You notice what it says there, the last part of verse 18. The Bible says uh, there that Saul, he arose and was baptized. Now again, the Apostle Paul got saved early in this chapter. If you back up in verse 5, there on the Damascus road, God comes to him and he says, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord says, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And Saul finally surrenders. I think he gets saved right there in verse 6 when he says, Lord, what will you have me to do? God, Saul got saved in this chapter. God came to him and God began to deal with him. I like he uses that word pricks in verse 5. You might want to circle that. God was pricking your heart. And maybe you remember that happened to you. I can remember sitting in a Baptist church in Logan County and the preacher would preach and God would prick my heart. God would convict me. I'd feel that still small voice of the Holy Spirit telling me, being you know what that preacher is saying is true. Being you know you're lost. Being you know Jesus can save you. You know you need to get saved today. Saul was kicking against the pricks. God was dealing with him. God was convicting him. He knew he needed to be saved. And finally we sing the invitation song sometimes, I surrender all. That's what Paul's doing there in verse 6. He says, God, I I'm ready. You're the Lord. You're the Lord Jesus. I know who you are. I know what you have did. I surrender to you. I want to be saved. And so I hope, number one, you've been saved. I hope you can go back. It don't matter how old you were. Some of us got saved when we were young. Some of us got saved when we were older. Some of us got saved in the middle. Doesn't matter where you were at. Some of you got saved in the church house. Some of you got saved in the Sunday school room. Some of you got saved at VBS. Some of you got saved in a truck or a car, at home in your bed. Some of you got saved out in the field somewhere. It doesn't matter where you were, how old you were, but it matters that it happened. God came to 
to you. He began to convict you. You realized, I'm lost. I, I, I'm a sinner. But Jesus is the Savior. I need to be saved. And you cried out to Jesus. That's how a person gets saved. Galatians tells us in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith. You are all, Galatians 3.26, you are all, everybody gets saved the same way. You are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So after we get saved, the first step, Paul gets baptized. He goes to this man, Ananias, very likely the pastor there of the church at Damascus. He goes to, to Ananias and he gets baptized. You may have wondered, what is this thing with baptism? Where did all this come from? Why do we do that at the beginning of that service? And you maybe say, well, you know, I've, I've grew up with that my whole life. I don't really understand it. Where did this thing of baptism come from? Well, a bunch of Baptist preachers didn't invent it. Jesus came up with the idea. We find it there in the New Testament. Indeed, in the Great Commission, uh, Matthew 28, God commanded us. He said the church, go uh, to the church, go and make disciples and baptize them. God told us to do that. And baptism is all about, this is why the first point is identification. Baptism is about identification. When Brother Daniel got baptized this morning, he's identifying with Jesus. He's identifying with what Jesus did on the cross. You remember in Romans 6 and verse 4, the Bible says we are buried with him in baptism. When Jesus died, he died on the cross, then he was placed in that tomb, and then three days later he came out of that tomb. And Jesus in the tomb was totally immersed. He was covered up in that rock, that Hey, whatever it was, he was immersed in that grave that he was buried in. And when Brother Daniel was baptized, you see it in picture form. Just like tonight, we'll see in picture form with the Lord's Supper. With baptism, you see in picture form how Jesus died, was buried, and then he rose again. It's about identification. Brother Jerry, when he joined the military years ago, and Brother Jerry went up there and he signed the dotted line and he was in the army. He was in. But when Jerry, Brother Jerry put that uniform on and came back home and let his mom and daddy see him in that uniform, everybody else knew that Brother Jerry was in the army. Many of you did the same thing when you signed up. That's how it is with baptism. When you trust with salvation, when you trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're saved. When you get baptized, it's like putting on that uniform after you've joined the, the military, it lets everybody else know you're in the Lord's army. It lets everybody else know uh, that you've been saved and you're now a follower of Jesus. Step number one, uh, after you get saved, is you need to be baptized. Maybe some of you are here this morning. And you say, preacher, I know that I've been saved. I know that I'm a Christian. I remember when it happened. I know that I know that I know that I've been born again. But I've never been baptized. You don't have to be baptized to go to heaven. Understand that. But God has called us to do it. The Lord has told us to do it. And Jesus said, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. If you love Jesus, be willing to follow him in scriptural baptism. So maybe, and I don't know, but I know our Baptist churches all across the land are full of people. Like both of these categories I'm going to give you. They're, they're full of people who have been saved, but never follow the Lord in baptism. You won't regret it. You'll be amazed how the, the peace God will give you as you come up out of, out of those waters knowing you've obeyed the Lord, you've did what the Lord wanted you. Some of you here tonight, today, you've been saved, but you've not followed the Lord in baptism. Some of you here, our Baptist churches are full of people like this. Some of you here, you got saved after you got baptized. You made a false profession when you were young. You got into the church and, and you joined the church, but you never really got saved. And you say, you know, years later, I remember, Brother Ben, I got saved. I know that I'm saved, but I got saved after I got baptized. It's believer's baptism. Right? If you weren't saved, you don't got scriptural baptism. You remember when, when, when uh, Philip wanted to baptize the eunuch and, and the eunuch said, here's water, can I be baptized? And Philip said, you can if you believe with all your heart, you may. You've got to be saved first, then you get baptized. So if you're here this morning and you say, well, preacher, I got baptized years ago at this church or some other church, and, uh, but I got saved after that. And I know that's when I got saved. It wasn't before my baptism. It was after my baptism. You should step out during this invitation 
and say, I, come down here and take my hand and say, Brother Ben, I, I want scriptural baptism. I want my baptism to be in the right order. I want it to be not before, not, uh, before my salvation, but after my salvation. Step number one, uh, baptism identification. Three steps. Number one, if you've not been scripturally baptized, you need to be baptized. That's step number one, identification. Step number two is church membership or initiation. Notice verse 19. Church membership is the second point. Initiation. Look at verse 19. It says, And Saul, he received some meat, he received some food, he was strengthened. Then, and notice what it says, Then was Saul certain days, and notice right in the middle of this verse, you'll underline it, he was with the disciples. With the disciples which were at the Damascus. Saul was there with the disciples at Damascus. Once you get saved, uh, you need to follow it in baptism. You need to be a member of a New Testament church. You'll notice the word disciple there. It's in the plural. You see that? It doesn't say Saul was a disciple. Saul was hanging out there by himself. But it says Saul was with the disciples. Christians belong with other Christians. Just like quail belong in a covey. Bees belong in a hive. Fish belong in a school. Sheep belong in a flock. God's given us all these pictures in nature, isn't it? Christians belong in churches. That's where God would have us to be with other Christians. Why is that? Iron sharpens iron. And you get in a New Testament church and we help each other. We build each other up. We edify each other. You're a blessing to me and hopefully I'm a blessing to you. And we do that to each other. We teach each other. We encourage each other. We edify each other. We uh, instruct each other. We help each other. That's why God came up with the idea of churches. We're there together. And Saul gets saved. He's not by himself. He's with the disciples. And here's the other thing, the word with. There's so much in the Bible. Again, we overlook it. We, don't, we miss the forest for the trees. That word with. He just wasn't identified as a disciple, but he was with the disciples. He's a member of the church. Some people look at church membership just like a club. You know, it might be, well, well, Brother Ben, you know, you're interested in Civil War history and, you know, there's a bunch of Civil War historical, illustra uh, historical organizations and maybe I'll, I'll send my dues in. I'll join one of those organizations and maybe if I get around to it, I might go to a meeting. But that's not how the church is, right? The church isn't just an organization, just a club that you join. The church is the Lord's church. And we're, we're part of the church. We're counted as, as the brethren. We're counted as members. Saul, he wasn't just, he's with them. He's right in the midst of them. When you get saved, God wants you to join a New Testament church and be there with the brethren, counted among them. Uh, he was with the uh, disciples. Again, the church is, is something we're part of. Uh, something that we're there and we join regularly, we attend regularly. Hebrews 10 and verse 25 tells us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So some of you this morning, maybe you need to take the second step and join the church. Become a member of Farmington Baptist Church. How do we do that? Sometimes we do it through baptism. Brother Daniel joined the church. He got saved. He joined the church through baptism. We don't separate baptism and church membership because they weren't separated in the New Testament. Acts chapter 2, you remember in verse number 41, says they that gladly received his word, the 3,000 that got saved on the day of Pentecost, they that gladly received his word were baptized and were added added unto them to the church at Jerusalem. Some people join the church through baptism. Some of you here uh, this morning, you say, well, well preacher, I, I've been saved. I know I'm saved. I don't have scriptural baptism. I want to join this church uh, by being baptized. I'll have scriptural baptism. I'll identify with Jesus, identify as a follower of Jesus, and become a member of this church. Some of you that are here, you've been saved. You've got scriptural baptism. It happened after you got saved. It was by a New Testament Baptist church. You've got scriptural baptism, but it's of a church somewhere else. Notice, sometimes people say, why do Baptists use the terminology we use? You say, well, preacher, I've been going to Baptist churches my whole life, and I've heard people talk about joining the church. Where's that at? 
what's right in the Bible. Look down in verse 26, same chapter. Look in verse 26. Saul leaves Damascus and he moves to Jerusalem. And notice the terminology in the first sentence. Acts 9, 26. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed, he attempted to what? Join himself to the disciples. Saul said, I'm not going back to Damascus. They were a blessing to me while I was there. Ananias baptized me. They loved me. They taught me. They encouraged me. They helped me. I'll never forget what they did for me, but I'm not going back there. God's planting me in Jerusalem right now. What's he do? He attempts to join the church at Jerusalem. Some of you that are here this morning, maybe you've left an area and you're not going back. You've moved your life, you've moved everything else, and often we'll leave our church letter behind where we go. I remember I had a preacher one time, he's gone on to glory, Brother Pat Cole. Brother Cole's an old-time preacher out of Hickman County. And he's preaching for me in in Hickman. And he told a story of this couple. And he would tell stories when he'd preach, and I'll never forget it. He, He told the story of this couple, they went to their house, and they were moving, and they went into every room, every closet, he said, they got everything. He said, finally, they went back in there and there was an old broom hanging up in the closet. And they said, we got to take that. And they took everything that they could take out of that old house and they moved to their new house, but they left their church membership behind. And that's how we often do, don't we? We don't join the church we're a part of. Step number two, you've been saved. You know you're saved. Uh, now you get scripturally baptized and you're counted. There you put your life, you put your membership, you put your covenant together, you covenant together with those disciples and become a member of a New Testament church. But let me show you one more thing. Step number three. Number one, baptism. Number two, church membership. Number three, <clears throat> ministry. Ministry. Here's the eyes. Identification initiation, and now illumination. Identification, initiation, illumination. Look there, my voice ain't going to hold out. I got too excited. Look at verse 20. It says, In straightway he, Paul, preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. What's Paul do? He begins to serve the Lord. He begins to do ministry. He goes to Damascus and he's telling people, about Jesus. He's telling people, listen, this man Jesus, he's not like any other man. He's the Son of God. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior. He's telling people who Jesus is. And you notice even in the next verse, he's telling them who he is. Verse 22, they were all amazed. Is not this he that destroyed them, but other believers which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither uh, for this intent. He's telling people who Jesus is. And who he is. We get saved. We follow the Lord in baptism. We join a New Testament church. And then we begin to serve God in that church. That's what ministry is. You know, you've seen the shirts before. You've seen the memes, the saints. Where it says, I know I'm somebody because God don't make junk. Well, some truth to that, isn't it? God made us all. God made us all different. We're all unique. We don't all have the same talents. We all can't play the the instruments, the piano like Miss Lisa. We can't play the drums like Brother Danny and the other instruments. Some of us, we can't all sing like Miss Jana. Some of us can't be great Sunday school teachers like we got great ones in this church. We, We don't all have the same gifts. But God made us all unique. And every one of us have something that we can do for Jesus. Not all the same. Some of us help out in the kitchen. Some of us help out on security. Some of us help out in the nursery. Some of us help out in children's church. There's all different things we can do. We all do something, but we take the gifts, the talents, the abilities that God gave us and we use them to serve the Lord. We plug them into the church because the Bible says God receives glory in the church. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. And we look around in the local churches we're a part of. Where's there a place that I can serve God? Where's there a place I can be useful? What an opportunity we have this week. Bible school. And you'd be amazed. You see, most of us, and I'm a little guilty of this, we still think West Kentucky is the West Kentucky of the 80s and 90s. It's not. You'd be amazed how many boys and girls all through Graves County and Callaway County and all through the Jackson Purchase, they ain't going to anybody's church. 
their mom and daddy may be used to, but they've gotten out of church and they're raising up their kids, not going to anybody's church. And having vacation Bible school. And we still got some places we could use some help. I know God doesn't gift everybody to help out with children, everybody to help out with, with Bible school, but He gives a lot of us where we can help out and serve the Lord. But I mean, I want to do something for God. God's given me some, uh, a burden. God's given me some talents. God's given me some abilities. <clears throat> what can I do? Find a place to serve God. Bible school is a great place to help. What can we do? We tell others about Jesus. We tell others what happened to us. We tell others uh, that Jesus made a difference. We invite them to church. Are all of them going to be saved? Are all of them going to come to church? Probably not. But remember Jesus said you scatter the seed, you sow the seed, and you never know who God's going to speak to. Now I know my voice is done, but you remember these three things. After we get saved, God would have us to be scripturally baptized. God would have us to join a New Testament church. And God would have us some way, somehow, all of us different, but God would have us some way, somehow, to serve God in that church we're a part of. What about you? Don't, don't leave off the first one. Make sure you're saved. These are after salvation. But if you've been saved and God speaks to us, how does God speak? He's not going to write your name in the sky. He's going to speak through that still, small voice that today's the day. You need to follow the Lord and be baptized. You need to join this church. You need to start serving the Lord. Bible school will be a great place to start. Let's t- be sure we've taken all three of these steps after we get saved, what God would have us do. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, I, I thank you for each one that's here. I pray the Lord you've took this, this sm- simple message. God, I pray you've spoken to people's hearts. Lord, I pray you'd bless this time. And Lord, I pray all of us that have been saved, all of us that are Christians, we can say we've taken all three of these steps. And if we've not, Lord, help us to do that. You'd, that's what you'd have us to do. And I pray we'd follow your example. Do what you'd have us do. And Lord, I pray especially if there's one here today that's never been saved, that today might be the day they cry out to Jesus, they look to the cross, and they can be saved. Bless this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing, Brother Greg. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, as we stand and sing, God has spoken to your heart.